This is the material that we are making our doors out of. It is one and a half inch thick Nidacore. Uh, you can see the plastic honeycomb here. And then this is a scrim fabric that's bonded, thermally bonded to each one of the cells. You can make out, these are eight millimeter cells on this particular version of it. So that kind of explains its density and its overall strength. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna glass each side of this. We are doing two layers of 1708 as our skin uh, on either side. Once we get those done, then we're able to cut the uh, final shape out, cut the windows out. We'll go through and decor it. For these particular doors, we're using unidirectional strips that are gonna go into each one of those decored areas to give some more rigidity to the surface. Then once that unidirectional is in place, we will glass tape uh, around that to get our edges. It's a process. The other option was to make a mold and do everything in a mold, which would give us a better final finish. But the, each one of these doors are kind of unique. Uh, they are different. All three of them end up being a little slightly different. So I'd have to do three separate modes, molds or modify each mold to make it work. And it just seemed like too much work. It's easier. Why not fair and paint more? Starting out with a 4x8 sheet of the Nidacor, the first step was to measure it down to the proper door size and use our Bosch track saw to give it a clean cut. When it was perfectly down to size, the two of us began to glass it, starting with a layer of 0.75 ounce chop strand as the base. The next two layers to overlap were a thicker 45-45 biaxial fiberglass. After that, we covered everything with a layer of peel ply to assure we'd have a smoother finished surface and covered everything in a cloth that would soak up extra resin as we vacuum backed it. Matt's next step in this ongoing project was to glass together multiple layers of our unidirectional fiberglass. Where he had been pointing out the plastic that sits inside the Nauticore, those edges will be decored and this unidirectional will be bonded in to give it that little bit of extra strength it needs. All together, Matt layered six sheets of the unidirectional on top of one another. The next day, after it had cured and was rock hard, it was time to measure out in the one and a half inch width of the door and cut it down with the track saw. Did the messy job now of decoring, so cutting back this Nida core. And that's that's the negative to have of this stuff. The reason why we used it is because it's cheap. It's a third of the price of what the foam core is. So this this piece was a this one and a half inch piece was around 120 bucks. The foam core would be about three something for that same type of thickness. So Again, the reason why we go with it. negative with it is because it's a plastic, the adhesive actually doesn't bond to this part of the core. If this was foam core, that would actually adhere there. So we're reliant on all of the edge, this fiberglass that we put in there, relying on it sticking there or, and the tape, the glass that's going to wrap around it. But you can see kind of how this fits. This is that unidirectional piece I ended up making and cutting down. It kind of just pockets itself right in there. It's in there nice and tight. And once I put in the adhesive, that structural putty, bond that into place, I'll come back, round over this edge a little bit, 
and then I can glass from side to side to make sure that it isn't going to go anywhere. I have just clear packing tape on this piece. This is going to get pressed against here to make sure I get a nice flat edge. So I want to make sure that this is flat. So using this metal piece with uh, packing tape on it to prevent it from bonding. Pressing this against. I just set the camera up here when I went to go take our plastic tarp off. Uh, you can kind of see it hanging right back there because I was like, oh, that'll be a cool shot as you get to see everything revealed. But I forgot that I taped up all the windows because we're priming and really there's no effect. On and off over the past two days, I've been working to seal up the cabin side windows from the inside. That is because we're ready to prime the exterior cabin side with its first coat of high build primer. Once the windows were done, I wanted to do small strips over the cabin top itself and keep the gel coat protected from any overspray while Matt hit the underside of the cabin top. We had a number of large plastic bags on hand, and since they weren't needed for much else, I figured they would be great to slice up and use as protection against primer. I placed a section of one inch tape around the edge to give myself a clean line and then went back to adhere my plastic strips just over that edge leading up to the cabin top. Time for another big transformation on the catamaran. We are working on the exterior cabin side. Although this part will eventually be covered with acrylic or glass, we still don't know yet. We did throughout here just kind of a light fairing to make sure that whenever the glass goes on, it isn't wavy. But what we're really focusing to look good is the underside of the cabin top because that will be painted and seen. So I've been trying to go along the edges there. Try to kind of tarp everything off as much as possible, especially since you know the cabin top here has gel coat on it. So just cover that up a little bit. And the decks, even though they'll get like a foam or a non skid eventually, the seams, kind of the areas that go around here, will be um, open, just gel coat as well. So got to protect those. Yeah, it'll be nice to see this kind of all one color. It was great watching it go from green to different colors of fairing compound at least. Just one more step and getting this thing close up ready.
After the first round, it was encouraging to see the multiple layers of glass and fairing begin to turn into a solid and coherent object. The areas above the peaks were a little hard to reach though, even with the gun, so we've debated on having to roll primer on there instead. First coat of high build primer is now on the exterior cabin sides and to be honest I think that's as far as we're going to get for quite a while now. Pretty soon we're going to be putting some PVC boards covering all of these windows so that we can get ourselves out of the tent this year, start working on putting those bows on, start getting those sterns on. But let's take a look and see how it turned out. In the very front section here you'll notice that nothing was done and that's because again not only are these basically can be covered with glass or acrylic, but that area is gonna have something that sits out from that edge to make the windows flush that will sit there. But the cabin sides themselves are looking really good. Quite happy with that. Looks very nice, and then underneath, now that the primer has started to dry a little bit, you can tell this outside edge still has a lot of ripples, which is unfortunate. I feel like I've spent forever working on it. Interior cove, not too bad, that will be visible. And this is, I think, gonna have to get some hand uh, rolling and stuff. It's just really hard to get with the sprayer. Same thing with port side, overall looking very good. Of course, still need to do some touch-ups to that overhang there. It is nice seeing a big change like this. I wish the boat were outside of the tent right now so we could kind of stand back and get the full image of it. But by the time it does, of course we have to cover these windows. Effect won't be the same, but it does still feel really good to be making noticeable steps forward. Well, so far everything is looking really good on the doors. It is a hot day today, isn't Super it? Super hot. I was about three quarters of the way into cutting out the window on the first door when I came to the conclusion that I probably should wait until I have the three separate doors mounted and hanging and then strike a line on it that's going to be uh, straight because my odds of cutting three independent door windows and then installing them and having them all line up is probably pretty close to zero. So we're just gonna leave this one as it is for now. We will get all three doors hung and then I can use that laser level, get my bottom, get the top, get the edges all laid out perfect. So then when we do finally put them in place for the last time, when they're all fared out and painted and everything like that, it's actually going to blend in together versus having three separate heights. Uh, going over there for the windows, but this is how we learn. Yep. So as you can see, the second door, that's going to be for most likely the port side. That does not have the opening cut out, uh, nor does it have the top. I just did this as the first round in here, in this decord area. I ended up putting half inch aluminum bar stock and this area and this area that is where the bolts are going to go in i'll tap that uh, aluminum bar stock to hold the bolts that will hang this door itself and then over the top of that was that unidirectional strip and again it's getting glassed from side to side once this cures i can round over the edge glass from side to side to make sure it's a very secure structure that isn't going to go anywhere and um, we'll do that for the next one we'll get those two hung and then the center is kind of the big question as to how exactly we're going to hinge that to be able to lift up i'm looking into some of the south co hinges which kind of self-support 
in theory, if I were raising the door, it's gonna support the door at whatever position that we stop at, just to make it a little bit easier to raise and lower that. And I just gotta calculate now as to what the overall, or the finished weight's going to be, what kind of force that's gonna put on those hinges. So if I need three of them, or if two will actually work for that. So I'm gonna do some calculations, weigh it out, calculate it, and then get some of those in order. Pandemonium